Buckle up, Buttercup. The game of the weekend is Sunday on CBS between my guy Tua Tagovailoa and my guy Josh Allen. Bills, Dolphins, going to be all sorts of awesome with both teams coming in at 2-0 and absolutely clicking on offense behind their quarterbacks. And this, this is not a fluke. And I love what Josh Allen had to say on Kyle Brandt's Basement Show on Omaha Productions, raving about Tua Tungavailoa, saying he's happy for him. And listen, Josh Allen could relate to this, where people were killing Josh Allen, wrongly so, in terms of the first couple of years and the completion percentage is low. And he said, I wish it wasn't a quarterback in the division, but I love that when Josh Allen was talking about how thrilled he is that Tua has been dominant. And I'm telling you, Tua's up for this. Tua is absolutely up for this. This this was not a fluke. Now, I'm not expecting four fourth quarter touchdowns against Buffalo, six total touchdowns. That I'm not expecting, but I'm expecting Jalen Waddle to put up gigantic numbers. I'm expecting Tyree Kill to put up monster numbers. I'm expecting Tua Tonga Vailoa with Mike McDaniel calling the plays, giving him confidence to match Josh Allen. Seriously. And that's the ultimate compliment. Now, matching Josh Allen is one thing. Beating Josh Allen? <laughs> yeah, good luck with all that. Josh Allen is playing football at a different level right now. I mean, he's the best quarterback in the NFL, bar none. And it's not even close. Gabe Davis says he's 100% going to play. So good luck trying to stop Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. Look at these numbers the last four times Josh Allen's played football. Two regular season games this year, two postseason games last year. Are you kidding me? That's absolutely bonkers. This game is going to be, I believe, the game of the week. This game is going to be the game of the year. I think this is going to be ridiculously fun. I think it's going to be a ball game in the fourth quarter. And this one has Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills 38, Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins 28 written all over it. Pretty clear message from Mike Tomlin right there. But the question is obviously a worthy one because Mitch Trubisky and the Steelers offense offensive once again last night. Mitch Trubisky was putrid. There's no good way to phrase it. He was tentative. Now, he didn't have a lot of help either. It wasn't all on Mitch. The receivers were dropping balls left and right. Johnson dropping balls. Claypool dropping balls. But... Mitch had no feel. Mitch had no clue. There was nothing working on offense other than, what a concept, George Pickens. We told you he was going to have a monster game. Look at that. Odell Beckham Jr. was on Twitter saying that was even a better catch than the one Odell made years ago. What a concept. You throw it to George Pickens. Would have liked to see even more. Look, the numbers for Mitch are just dreadful. Pedestrian, you watch him last night, and honestly, puny, putrid, no zip. Najee Harris is not getting it done. The offensive line stinks. Matt Canada has no idea what he's doing calling plays. Mike Tomlin was terrible in terms of in-game management in the fourth quarter. He deserves a lot of criticism in terms of the punt late and then kicking the field goal instead of going for the touchdown. And I give you all that to give you this. Of course, Kenny Pickett should play. It's easy. It's obvious. The week four game for the Pittsburgh Steelers is against the Jets. Mitch Trubisky, and I'm trying to paint this picture for you, it's not all his fault. It, obviously, there are issues with the play calling, the head coach, the receivers dropping passes, the offensive line, Najee Harris, all of it. But Mitch Trubisky has made three plays this year. Three plays. Three plays in overtime in the victory against Cincinnati. Other than that, he's been, eh? Look, I'd fire Matt Canada. I, I would like a new offensive line. I'd like the receivers to catch the ball. Those are a lot of things that are out of the Steelers' control. Just play Kenny Pickett. I love him. Drafted him in the first round. He was amazing in college. This is easy. I also want to make sure we give a ton of props to the Browns and my guy Jacoby Brissett because 
This was a pretty terrific bounce back win for Cleveland following that you know, unfathomable meltdown against the Jets. And Jacoby Brissett, who you know I like a lot, was dealing last night. And he was accurate. He had the fastball working. The touchdown to Amari Cooper. I love the zip on the fastball on the touchdown to David Njoku right here. That, that was excellent stuff. Jacoby Brissett, who is super smart, big-time leader, obviously in a very difficult spot this year with the Deshaun Watson suspension, he had it going on. How about Amari Cooper? Back-to-back -back games now with 100 yards plus for the wide receiver position, and that's kind of a big deal, especially when you consider Brown's football, Brown's history, and that was an excellent trade. And then there's this guy, Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb has been, albeit early, Best running back in the NFL to start the season. That's not even up for discussion or debate. I think Chubb has been terrific. The offensive line has been outstanding. Kevin Stefanski deserves a lot of credit getting these guys ready. After that crazy, zany, how the hell did that just happen? Loss to the Jets. This was one Cleveland absolutely positively had to have. And the way they won it... National TV, division rival at home. That is absolutely terrific. Welcome back, Time to Shine. News you could use on a Friday where the Boston Celtics have suspended head coach Ime Odoka for the entire 2022-2023 season for violations of team policies. The suspension is effective immediately. Team owner Wick Grossbeck said at a press conference today that the suspension comes after a month-long investigation by an external law firm that found multiple violations of team policy. A decision about Adoka's future with the Celtics will be made at a later date. I'm surprised they didn't just outright fire him. I think you either keep this in-house and Ime is still coaching, or, assuming he violated the policy, which clearly he did, fire him. Now, as we speak, the odds are still in favor of the Boston Celtics to win a championship. They made it to the NBA Finals last year, and they had a terrific offseason. Joe Mazzulla takes over as the head coach. He is well-respected. I still think it's going to be very difficult now for Boston to repeat, obviously on the heels of what happened against Golden State in the finals, and Ime Adoka was superb in getting last year's Celtics team to achieve and overachieve. It's a Football Friday staple here on Time to Shine. Love or love Carson Wentz downplaying the matchup against his former Eagles team. So, Wentz will shine against Philly on Sunday. Loathe. I mean, I loathe Carson Wentz in general now. I loathe this matchup. I loathe him as a starting quarterback. It's crazy to think that he was in route in 2017 to winning the league MVP before he shattered his knee against the Rams in week 14. I mean, Carson turns it over left and right. That's why, obviously, Indy threw him out and why he struggled in Washington. And this is a ball-hawking, playmaking defense. Jalen Hurts is going to dominate and remind Carson Wentz why they drafted Jalen Hurts in the first place. How about Lamar Jackson? Love or loathe? Lamar is going to fly against the Patriots on Sunday. Love. I mean, Lamar was sensational against Miami. Let's not minimize. This run, to me, is the wow play of the year in the NFL. It's a loss, so people aren't necessarily focusing on it that way. I think Lamar has been excellent in his career in terms of completion percentage against New England. I think that he is going to dominate the Patriots. I know New England's coming off of a win. I think that was flukish and more about the Steelers than the Patriots. I think that Lamar Jackson is going to have a dominant game throwing the football and running it as well. Staying in the AFC, love or love, Joe Burrow is going to maul the Jets, love. This is a huge get-right spot for Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. I think Burrow is going to throw for four touchdowns. I think Jamar Chase is going to have a monster game. I think the offensive line is going to protect him. 
Remember, the Jets, even with that win last week, they don't have a great pass rush. So I don't think they could take advantage of the issue that has plagued Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals in the first two weeks of the season. I think since his defense comes to play, I think Joe Mixon comes to play, and I think Joe Flacco is going to turn back into a pumpkin. How about the matchup of MVPs in the NFC? Love or love? Aaron Rodgers is going to get the best of Tom Brady on Sunday. Love. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to dominate this football game. This has three touchdowns, zero interceptions for Rodgers, written all over it. I could see, at the end of the day, Watson and Dobbs making plays, the young cats for Rodgers. I think that Dylan and Jones running it out of the backfield will be excellent. I also think, you see the sickly numbers for Tom Brady. Tom Brady is not 100%. And he doesn't have anyone running pass patterns for him. Mike Evans is suspended, and rightly so. Injuries galore, offensive line, wide receivers. Bucks defense is fantastic. So I don't think this is going to be one of those games where it's a 35-point uh, victory for the Green Bay Packers and they win 35-10. I think this one has 24-17 Green Bay and my guy Aaron Rodgers written all over it. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.